How much do you think you'd need to earn in the UK to be in the top 10% of taxpayers? Maybe 100k? Maybe more? And what kind of job would you need to do to earn that kind of money? And then a more important question, how much do you think you'd need to earn to feel rich? Whatever that means to you. Hold those numbers and I'll get the answer in just a second. So there are almost 30 million people right now on the UK payroll, and that's according to the latest data from the Office of National Statistics. And that's actually the highest it's ever been, at least since they started collecting their records since 2014. Now we've got all of the latest information here of earnings by age, your location, your industry, and then probably the most interesting one to me, we've got the sheet that tells us how much you need to earn to be in the top 50%, the top 10 percent and then here the top one percent of earners so want to know how much you need to earn to be in the top one percent let's go and have a look if you want to be in the top 50 percent of people here in the uk you'll need to be earning 26,340 pounds and yes all of these figures are before the tax man's got his grubby mitts on your money if you want a monthly figure that's 2,195 pounds a month now is that more or less than you thought anyway that puts you firmly in the middle but what about the big money? If you want to be in the top 25%, then you're going to need £40,920 coming in a year, which works out to be £3,410 each month. Again, is that surprising to you? Did you expect higher or did you expect a bit lower? Now that kind of money can be found in jobs like being a solicitor, a marketing manager, and in band eight roles in the public sector. Okay, but what about the big money? Here's what you'd need to earn to be in the top 10% of taxpayers in the UK. I'd love to know if you guess what this is before. The salary you need is £62,160 or the equivalent monthly take home of £5,180. Surprised? Personally, I thought this would be a lot higher and I remember looking at this information a few years back and thinking, wow, that seemed low to me. Anyway, may as well complete this list. To get into the top 5%, you're now looking at £84,600 or a monthly take home of £7,050. And if you want to be part of this exclusive 1% club, right now in the UK, you'd need to be earning a whopping, wait for it, £175,000, or £14,618 per month. That's a lot of money. And just think, that's the income of around 300,000 people here in the UK. Now, rather than just tell you this information and end the video, what I really want to dig into for you is two things. Firstly, I want to take you through the rest of this data to let you know the kinds of industries you need to be looking at if you want to earn the big money. And then secondly, I want to talk about a bit what it means to be rich and how this earned money is only really just a small part of what we actually need to try to build our own wealth. Right then, let's break this down by industry because there's probably a lot of you out there thinking you want a slice of that 1% or you might even be thinking what industries do you need to get your kids into? So here goes. As you can see, the highest paying sector on average is finance and insurance. Now just bear in mind these averages are now mean averages, not median averages. So these will look quite high as they can easily get skewed by some pretty big earners. So for our finance and insurance earnings, we're looking at over 91,000 pounds. This leads the way by quite a big margin. And then coming up in second place is mining and quarrying, interestingly enough. Then filling up spots three, four, and five is information and communication energy production and supply, and then professional, scientific and technical, whatever that's supposed to mean. It's probably quite a broad category. Now, on the low end, here are the sectors that apparently pay the least. Agriculture, accommodation and food services, and then households and extraterritorial. Another idea I have no clue about at all. Now, whatever it is, the average salary is just £17,700. So if you're looking to make some money, this one would be good to avoid. Unless you're pretty young, you can live at home without anyone else to support or care for. Following on from this, as I was researching this video, I asked all of you on YouTube on my community page what amount of money you'd need to feel rich. I left it pretty vague what I meant by the word rich because I really just wanted to get the conversation going and I was really surprised by the results all of you voted on. So I gave you different categories of annual salary from 45k all the way up well into the six figures and beyond. And I did that on purpose knowing that even if you chose the lowest band, that still puts you in the top 25% of earners in the UK. 
I think the most interesting takeaway here is that in order to feel rich, you guys really do want a lot of money. And the biggest category chosen was, unsurprisingly, 150K and above with 34% of the vote, followed closely by the 100K to 150K category. Then finally, in third place, we have the 85K to 100K range. Now, bear in mind from the data earlier, all of these categories put you in the top 5% of earners in the country, but most of you would want to be much closer to that 1% to feel rich. Now, knowing what you know now about the rest of the country, would you change your vote? Maybe a subject for another poll after this video. Worth saying that this is hardly representative of the country as people who watch finance and investing YouTube channels are likely to be higher earners than the average. As in order to actually invest, you do need to be in a position to have disposable income and you tend to be skewed a little bit older as well. However, although this might not be the most scientifically accurate survey ever done, there have been other ones that have asked people similar questions. I came across this article in The Independent which reads, more than half of Britons on 80k per year think they earn about average. It refers to a study done by the New Statesman where they also found that even those who earned around 40k per year considered themselves normal rather than fortunate. And then following on from this, here's one thing I think that really stands out. It goes on to say that people are likely to underestimate their salary against an average in the country and also 43% of those with incomes between 100k and 120k thought that their social circles were better off than they were. I think I'd definitely be in the same boat when I look back over the years. You always think other people are better off than you and there's this constant battle to look the part, keep up with the Joneses, which really ends up all just being a big waste of money. Also, I do get it. These amounts of money sound like small fortunes, but as some of you pointed out in the comments of the poll, after taxes and then all of your bills, you can easily spend large sums of money. It does all come down to affordability and in some parts of the country, what might seem like a large salary won't go anywhere near as far as a cheaper part of the country with a lower salary. So perspective and many other factors have to come into play to really make someone feel rich. Staying on the topic of rich, honestly, this is a whole other video topic, but let's just break down what rich might look like and take an example of someone who must obviously be rich. I think a good place to start would be the Football Premier League. So I did a quick search and found out the highest paid player right now is apparently Kevin De Bruyne, who plays for Manchester City, which is just a couple of miles away from me right now. His contract is 400K per week, and this works out to be an annual salary of 20 million 800,000 pounds. Assuming that all goes through the income tax system, every month he'll likely see this kind of paycheck, £919,523, so just shy of a million pounds per month. And then across the whole year, his take-home pay will be £11 million. That's £9 million worth of taxes, which should cover HMRC's Christmas party this year. Now, even with taxes, there's no argument that he's still wildly rich. But does a high income really mean that he's wealthy? And then without getting out our tiny violin and feeling sorry for him, is getting paid a lot of money actually all it's hyped up to be? I mean, just from a professional sports perspective, apparently their average career length is just eight years. And while Kevin might be fine with his 400k a week, many of them don't end up in such a great position. From data I could find from a US perspective, which is probably similar to here in the UK, a Sports Illustrated article reports that 78% of NFL players and 60% of NBA players face serious financial hardships after retirement. Now there's obviously a ton of reasons why this is and something we can go really into depth on probably in another video. But I do think this is an interesting topic for us because it leads us on to another thing talking about wealth and why actually having a high income won't necessarily make you feel rich. Really, it's about what you do with that income and sometimes as you'll see now, some of the wealthiest people in the UK aren't really focused on building up their earned income. It's all about building wealth. So let's go and see what that really means. So why don't we start somewhere on the Sunday Times rich list? We've seen what they earn in the Premier League, and while they make a ton of money, you're not gonna find a footballer here at the top. These are the wealthiest people in the UK based on adding up all of their assets. And there's similar ones for the US and the world, but let's keep this one local. Right at the top, you have the Hinduja family, you've got James Dyson, and you'll even find the Prime Minister and his wife Akshata Murthy all the way in the basement of position 222, with just a small £730 million joint fortune. Now, I wonder if they feel poor amongst all of these people in their social circles. Maybe we'll save that for another video. One thing you'll see in common for a lot of these names is that their wealth is often tied to some kind of big business. And it's once you add up all of their shares in those businesses that you really start to see where real wealth is made. So just as an example, up here in position number six is the Mittals, 
and they own the big company ArcelorMittal, which is a steel producing and mining giant. Now, would you be surprised to hear that their salaries as chief executive and executive chairman are way less than some Premier League footballers? Well, let me show you here. On the company's latest annual report, if you dive all the way to page 221, you'll see the pay packages of each of them. The numbers are based in thousands, so you have to multiply them up to get the actual salaries. And if we take the executive chairman here as an example, his salary for the last year was $1.5 million. But this is only a small part of the package. The rest of the earnings and what really builds wealth is the short-term and long-term share incentives. So as long as the company does well and meets certain targets, he'll make another four times as much on top through those shares. And then with a bit of luck, those shares can also end up growing in value too. And this isn't unique to this company. You'll see this all over the business world as earned income is typically taxed a lot higher than assets, which are usually left untouched until you have to sell them or get dividends. The super well-off people with real wealth on this list could potentially just live off their assets, not earn a penny more and pay any income tax, or even just take bank loans against their assets and use those to pay for their living expenses. There's probably a whole host of other ways people can do this, but still a pretty interesting one to think about. Now, just sticking to this whole topic of wealth, let's zoom out a bit and look at the UK as a whole. We do have some data here from Warwick University and the study they did where they looked at how wealth is distributed across the UK and what kind of levels of wealth that you need to be a top percentage household. Also, even more importantly, I think, they show what kinds of assets make up their wealth. And I'll tell you now, it's not cash coming in from their day job that's their biggest source of wealth, even if that obviously did help in the first place. One of the biggest findings in this report is the fact that wealth is concentrated heavily in the top 10% of households. And as you can see on this chart, which shows each 10% section running from the lowest to the highest, the biggest jump is from the top 20% to the top 10%. The top 20% of households have a net worth of £600,000, but to be part of that exclusive 10% club, you need to have a minimum of £1.5 million worth of assets. I think this is really interesting when you compare that to the earnings we covered at the start of the video, because earning a top 10% income is not going to get you into the top 10% of household wealth anytime soon, unless you're super careful and invest your money, which the top 10% do, and I'll touch on that in just a moment. Another part of this report here on page 13 actually shows us what the top 10% looks like if we break it down further into individual percentages. What this now shows us is that the top 1% is where most of the wealth is held. And this is what skews the averages for the rest of the top 10%. As you can see, most of the wealth needed to be at the top 10% is around the million pound mark. But unless you have over five million pounds of wealth, I'm sorry, but you're not getting into that top 1% anytime soon. Although we could ask if any Manchester City players have got any spare cash lying around. So the big question, what makes up that millions of pounds worth of wealth? Is it gold coins, fancy artwork, whiskey, or is it a lot more boring than that? Page 14 of the same report tells us everything we need to know. And here it is on screen now. So we're back to each section running from the left to right, from the lowest 10% to the highest 10%. And as you can see, the biggest difference really is two major kinds of assets, pensions and property. Pensions we can see here start to make up between 40 and 50% of all wealth in the wealthier households. And then property shows a similar trend, making up between 30% and almost 50% in groups above the average. I think one of the biggest takeaways from this is that owning assets that have historically done very well and tend to increase in value above the rate of inflation really improves the wealth of those people who own a part of it. Well, duh. The problem is that if only one part of society keeps buying those assets and has the means to own them, the gap between the richest and the poorest just keeps getting bigger, as if you never have the means to buy assets, then you end up in a difficult situation which millions of people in the UK find themselves in every single day. Now, I don't have the solution for that, but I do think that if that gap widens too much, we put ourselves in a very dangerous place. Maybe another topic for another video. So now you've seen the data and we've seen what it means to be rich in the UK and what the top few percent earn. Let me again ask you a question that I'd love for you to drop in the comments below on. What would you need in order to feel rich? I'm not going to define anything or give you any more than that. And you don't have to even give numbers for a salary. Just let me know what you'd need to happen. It might even just be a feeling or it could just be something as simple as saying, once my mortgage is paid off, I'll feel rich. Or once I've paid off my last bit of debt, that's me set. If it helps, I'll start. A rich for me is having complete financial freedom where I can do pretty much whatever I want each day knowing that all of my bills are covered and there's enough left to do some fun stuff as well. I'd love to know your thoughts below. And while you're there too, if you've enjoyed the video, please do let me know. Hit the like button, subscribe for more. 
And maybe I'll do a mini series where I can look at other countries next. Maybe the US would be a good one to focus on in another video. Anyway, until then, and as always, happy investing.